Hey guys, it's your girl Mona. Welcome to Juniority. Today I have a very special guest for you guys. Her name is Trinity Brown and to meet her we are flying you to Detroit, Michigan. Trinity, welcome to the show. Hi. It's so good to have you. It's nice to be here. Thank you. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm going to be a junior in high school soon, and I started Trinity's Wire Creations when I was going into the eighth grade when I was 12. And so in the past three years, I've been trying to improve as much as I can in terms of the wire I use, the technique that I use, and the art that I make. And what inspired you to start Trinity Wire Creations? When I first started, it was because of the recovery period I was going through uh, during the spinal fusion I underwent in 2015. Um, it was really hard to have to stand still and not do anything for a while. I was a dancer for 10 years, and it was really hard to have to sit still. And so jewelry was definitely a way to unleash my creativity in a different way that wasn't going to injure me further. So now that I'm recovered, I do dance and I also do jewelry. So it's a win-win. That's fantastic, and congratulations on your recovery. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Was it hard for you in the beginning when you started learning how to do wire uh, jewelry? It was hard and it was easy, mostly because most of my inspiration comes from Pinterest, so I will take um, a design that I see and try to change it into my own version. Um, but in the very beginning when I started wire wrapping, it was difficult because I didn't necessarily know if people were going to enjoy what I was doing as much as I was enjoying it. Um, but other than that, the, the process is pretty easy for me now that I've been doing it for so long. Nice. That's awesome. When you started your business, did you find out that there were plenty of art shows and events for you to showcase your business? Well, there's this nonprofit organization here in Detroit called the Mint Artist Guild. It's with a whole bunch of uh, Metro Detroit teenagers from different high schools and different backgrounds. And we come together and we learn about copyright and we learn about um, pricing and different mediums. And we take a whole bunch of classes from professional artists. And that is when we learn how to um, properly go through major art fairs, such as the Belle Isle Art Fair, the Palmer Park Art Fair. Those are really big art fairs here. And so we get to participate in those art fairs for a significantly lower price than the booth fees because booth fees can be pretty expensive. And so that's definitely a really great way for um, me to learn how to go through those types of um, art fairs, so. That's amazing. That's a wonderful resource, it sounds like. It is. So we have some of your products here in the studio. Thank you so much for sending those. I really appreciate it. Um, You're so welcome. I am super excited. So I have a pendant, a necklace, a ring, and last but not least, my absolute favorite piece is this Juniority necklace. It's so beautiful. Thank you so much for creating this. I absolutely love it. No problem. It was such a fun making it. Oh, I'm glad. So tell me how long does a piece like this take you? Well, normally it takes me uh, 10 to 20 minutes depending on the length of the name and you know how long, um, you know, how I'm feeling that day. Um, but that one didn't take long because I knew that it was going to a um, great area. I've never shipped out to California. <laughs> so it was super fun to um, finally ship out there. So it well, was fun. Thank you so much. I'm glad we were able to make it happen. That's cool. And I hope you get to ship worldwide soon. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> You also actually use sterling silver and 14 karat gold to create these pieces. What I'm curious about is, seeing something like this, how do you maintain not breaking the wire? Well, wire is actually pretty malleable. It's pretty easy to stop it from breaking as long as you know exactly how much you can twist it before it breaks. So there's definitely a limit in which um, I can uh, do wire work to the point where it's not gonna break. So I kind of know my limits when I make wire jewelry. Gotcha, so you've gotten it down. Definitely. Nice. You have actually in the past curated your own art show. Tell me what that process was like for you. Well, the Curve Teen Art Show was most definitely a success. It was my first time ever um, putting together an event that big. 
Um, it was definitely easy with the um, help of my mentors. I would not have been able to do half as much as I um, was able to do without them. Um, they taught me about venues, about spacing, about layout, about how to go about trying to find 25 amazing young artists. Um, they basically talked me through everything in terms of planning the entire show. So I definitely would not be anywhere without them. Um, that includes my parents and then the um, founders of the Mint Artist Guild that I talked about earlier, um, Vicki Elmer and Mark Loeb. So I don't know where I would be without them. So the show was most definitely a success and it was so fun planning one and I hope it becomes an annual event. Yeah, I hope so too. And shout out to everybody that's supporting you. That's amazing. Yes, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. What criteria did you use to curate the artists that were part of your art show? I definitely looked for artists that might not be experienced in terms of selling their art so I could teach them. Um, when I was a starting, um, when I was a blooming artist, it was definitely hard to um, figure out what was right and what was wrong. So I definitely wanted to be there for them in terms of mentorship. So I tried to find um, a good mix of experienced and inexperienced young artists um, close to the city of Detroit, because um, that was definitely a theme um, recurring in the art show. Very cool. I love that you said inexperienced artists and because you wanted to teach them. You wanting to pass that on is pretty amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. So why did you call your art show the Curved Art Show? Well, the reason why I called it Curb is because it also plays into um, my scoliosis and my recovery. I wouldn't be creating art without um, having a spinal fusion, and I feel like every artist has a story. And so I wanted to input my story into teen art. Um, two things I love, um, not giving up, which shows through um, my spinal fusion and you know persevering through that, but also teen art and young artists and aspiring artists. And that's definitely two things that I love. So I wanted to input them both into the art show as much as possible. That's beautiful. I love that. So you also give back to the National Scoliosis Foundation. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I definitely know that I wouldn't be where I am without my spinal fusion. And although it was kind of unfortunate to have because of dancing and me having to stop, it definitely wouldn't have uh, turned into this. Um, so I definitely wanted to give back and um, share awareness in terms of what scoliosis is because it affects a lot of people and a lot of people don't even know what it is. And so I definitely wanted to make sure that I donated back to the National Scoliosis Foundation. That's very nice. What advice do you have for aspiring young entrepreneurs? I definitely would say don't give up and don't be afraid of failure. Um, because if there were, um, there's so many techniques that I've tried and failed at and it definitely makes me um, stronger and it definitely makes my jewelry even better. Um, so I would say don't be afraid of failure and to never give up. Very good advice. So what does Trinity do for fun? I spend a lot of time with my family and a lot of time with my friends and that's definitely one way that I spend, um, spend my time a lot. Um, but the rest of it is mostly jewelry. <laughs> that's what I do for fun. Um, it's really calming and um, sometimes I'll just um, sit back and watch TV and wire app, you know, and that's just uh, one way I spend time. It's a lot of way. It's a good way to pass time. Yeah, being creative is the best way to pass time. That's awesome. So for people that want to know more about you, where can they find you? I have a website named trinityswirecreations.com. That's where you can see my blog posts and you can also shop online where I ship worldwide. And then I also um, have a Instagram called Trends Wire Creations. That's where I post all of my work in progress pendants and that's where I post where I will be in the upcoming shows in Detroit, Michigan and locally as well. And then I have Trinity's Wire on Pinterest where you can see all of my inspirations in terms of creating pendants and creating art. That's where I spend a lot of my time um, just seeing what other people um, chose to do with wire and seeing how I can turn that into my own version of um, art. And then I also have Trinity's Wire on Facebook. Um, that's definitely where I update about my newest collections and where I'll be. 
and um, when I upload on my website and all of that great stuff. Very cool. Well, we'll make sure people can find you. Trinity, thank you so much for being on our show. I really appreciate you. And I absolutely love the jewelry that you're creating. It's beautiful. Uh, you know, you, you obviously love what you're doing because I can see it in the details. And uh, congratulations on your work. And I hope you continue to grow. Thank you so much. That is so great to hear. You're welcome. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching our show. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you'll get a notification next time we upload a new episode. Be sure to check out our social media at Juniority TV. You can also check out our website at JuniorityTV.com. Until next time, peace.